Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Resurrection on this Reformation weekend. It is a very full day, and we are so glad that you can be here to help us get it started. I uh, just want to make a few announcements before I uh, introduce Dr. George uh, Ghanem from the Holy Land Christian Solidarity Cooperative. We have uh, a pledge weekend coming up in two weeks. So there will be pledge cards available for you next week here in the church sanctuary or just outside. You can also uh, go online and do your pledge commitment there. Just remember, it's anonymous. It's just for your own planning and your own devotional life so that you can reassess what your blessings are this year and uh, before God and nobody else uh, make decisions about what proportion of your giving you would like to dedicate to kingdom work here at Resurrection Lutheran Church. Next weekend, which is uh, the first weekend of November, it's also All Sundays, all, all Souls, or Commemoration of the Faithful Departed weekend. On Sunday, we will have only one service here in this sanctuary at 8 o'clock. There'll be no 9.30 service, no adult Bible class, because we'll be setting up for the service in the park, our joint service at Ritter Park at 11 o'clock. So we do invite you to take part in that. And uh, don't forget that that's all going to be uh, um, starting at 11 o'clock down at Ritter Park next week, November 6th. Now let me invite um, Dr. Ghanin to come up and say a few words. As you all know, he is uh, a friend of ours here at Resurrection Lutheran Church. Uh, we've seen him last year and uh, uh, we'll have some articles for your, for your uh, viewing out there. But just want to say a few words about his organization too. Thank you, Pastor Dr. Jonathan. Good to see you. Good morning. It's good to be here one more time uh, with you, brothers and sisters. Um, um, Pastor said, my name is George, the one who doesn't, I don't believe, I, didn't, I, I think I met everybody. <laughs> it's good to see um, that you're all doing well. Um, just a quick um, um, announcement about the Christians in the Holy Land. Um, th thank be to God, things are okay. Um, it's tough, but it's okay. Christians uh, the last three years in, in, in Bethlehem and Jerusalem have uh, been affected with COVID as everybody else in the world. Um, the vaccine was late arriving to us, so that made a little bit things worse than it should be. Um, economy is bad because uh, with, uh, with COVID, nobody was able to visit the Holy Land from uh, two million Christian visiting the Holy Land to zero, visiting the Holy Land in the last three years. So uh, economically, things was rough. Many families have st struggled with finding just daily bread. Many starved and uh, our m missionary, our ministry is, is, uh, became crucial to them. So um, more families are sending their carvings that they make to the United States trying to sell it. So um, um, I ask you, I uh, appeal to you, I appeal to your generosity again um, to help your brothers and sisters in Bethlehem during this difficult time. We hope that things will get better hopefully next year when Christians start to visit the Holy Land again. Uh, but until then, this is the only source of income. Uh, last year, I just want to um, tell you a happy news that last year, through this ministry, we gathered $50,000 that we sent to the families in Bethlehem. We helped 500 families. So uh, this is a blessing. It's uh, for all of us. It's a um, um, it's, uh, give, give. It's thanks be to God. And um, we were uh, happy to do that. This year, we're hoping to do the same. So um, please, before you leave, come to the display, look at the carvings, buy one or two of your Christmas gifts, I, as I usually say, a nativity set that is made in Bethlehem, nothing like it. Buy one for you, yourself, your loved ones. But mostly what you will purchase today, it's brothers and sisters, is hope. You're telling the Christians in Bethlehem to be hopeful in Jesus, that Jesus will never leave them alone, that you will never leave them alone, and we know that for a fact. Jesus is deep in our heart. Nobody could take him away. We know he will take care of us in Bethlehem, but today we ask you to be Jesus' hands and feet and help those Christian families. Thank you again one more time. Keep us in your prayers. And as usual, I wish you a Merry Christmas from Bethlehem. God bless you. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now I invite you to stand as we begin our worship service together. Let us begin in the name of our God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please face the cross as we sing the processional hymn.
O Christ, O Lord, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Today's first reading comes from the the book of Revelation. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe, and language, and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Today's epistle comes from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Now, we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, 
so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteous, righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll continue with our children's message. We invite the kids to come on up front for a children's message. You got to come up because you're going to come up again a little bit in a little <laughs> bit anyways. Good morning. Come on up and join Miss Erica. Good morning. Do you guys want to sit? Awesome. Are you coming up? That's it? Okay, we have some shy friends today. Good morning. How are you? Good. Thank you for asking me. I'm going to sit down with you all. Did you hear earlier that it's Reformation Sunday? Do you know what that word means, Reformation? No. <laughs> it, Re Reformation means change. Change. And there was an important person that our church is named after. You might have learned about him in Kick's event last month. Do you know that important person, maybe? Nope. His name is Martin Luther. Have you heard of Martin Luther? Yes? Well, I brought a little book to read to you to tell you a little more about Martin Luther's life. It says, many years ago, there lived a young man named Martin Luther. Young Martin was studying to be a lawyer. But one day, he got caught in a terrible storm. He was so afraid that he promised God he would become a monk if he escaped the storm. Guess what? The storm died down, and he kept his promise. It's kind of a cool pop-up book, isn't it? All right. Martin Luther devoted his life to God. He began studying the Bible, where he read for himself what it said about having faith in Jesus. In his reading, Martin discovered the very good news that we are all saved by faith. Martin Luther didn't like what the church was teaching about faith and good works. He especially didn't like the teaching that Christians could go to heaven faster by paying money to the church. So he wrote down 95 theses explaining his disagreements. Then he shared them for others to read. Not everyone agreed with Martin Luther's ideas. They were mad. They brought him before the Holy Roman Emperor and asked Martin Luther to take back everything he said. But he refused and stood by his beliefs. Martin Luther's life was in danger. On the way back to his home, the carriage he was riding in was surrounded by riders. Were they enemies? No, they were his friends. They'd come to take him away to a castle where he could be safe. That sounds pretty cool, right? Like, go hide in a castle? Martin Luther kept writing his ideas about God, grace, and faith. 
His writings were printed and spread far and wide. He even translated the Bible into German. This was super important because ordinary people in his country could not read it and think about it for themselves. Do you guys know German? No? I only know a little. Okay. Martin Luther inspired a reformation, remember we heard that word earlier, of the church. Many women and men followed in his footsteps by introducing new ideas and big changes. Even today, Christians reform the church as we read the Bible, listen to the Holy Spirit, and follow Jesus and his faith. I think one really cool thing about Martin Luther was how much time he spent reading the Bible and studying the Bible and making it available to people. So today we have a special presentation for second and third graders. So we would love all second and third graders and their families to come up, please. Thank you very much, Miss Erica. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Abel, you gotta stay up here. Mark. Right? All right. I'll just get Mark and Silas. And parents, come on up too. Here, we will give the Bible to the parents and you can present it in just a moment. This is part of the ministry at Resurrection where as students continue to grow up, if you remember a few months ago we passed out toddler Bibles to toddlers, you are no longer toddlers, you are growing young men. So you guys get bigger Bibles today. Um, and it's a special Bible that we picked out for you guys. Not only is it special because it's God's Word, but there's good activities in there to use on your own and also to do with your families. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that on Wednesday um, if you guys would like to join us. But I'm, at this point, we will present it to you guys. Your parents will present it to you. So parents, when your sons were baptized, you promised to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and ask the Holy Spirit to help them grow in faith and love for Jesus. Are you willing to carry out this promise? Yes, we are committed to our promise to help our children grow in faith and in love for Jesus and So parents, we pray you will help your children read their Bible and grow in their faith in Jesus. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, may the Holy Bible be a blessing in faith in their faith life of your children and in your home. Go ahead and present the Bible to your sons and read those words to them. Go ahead. So young men, boys, will you read your Bibles with your parents and share the love of Jesus with your families? If so, say, Yes, with Jesus' help. Good. <laughs> Young men, may the written word of God help you know and trust in Jesus and in his salvation for it. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for the commitment of these parents and the blessings they share with their sons today. Amen. Go in peace dedicated to the growing in the knowledge of God's grace and salvation and the study of his word. And have fun reading your Bible together. Go ahead and take a seat, you guys. I invite the congregation to now rise as we continue with the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 18th, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus said, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please bow your heads with me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this word that you have called us to abide in. We thank you for this place that you have given us to hear your word and worship you. Cause us to now grow in the power of your word as we meditate about, upon what it means to be your disciples and the freedom that you have won for us. Amen. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as pointed out in the children's message, it's Reformation Sunday. 
And on a day like today, we celebrate freedom. Yes, of course, we celebrate the work of the reformers, of most not notably Martin Luther. If you haven't really looked into his life, he really lived a fascinating life. He wasn't just some boring monk holed up reading the Bible a lot. He did some crazy stuff. And we celebrate what he did, but this is a church service. And we don't worship Luther, we worship God and what he has done for us. Admittedly, Luther would probably be rolling over in his grave if he knew that we named our church body after him. He didn't do any of his work for his own glory, for his own fame, for, for his own popularity or gain. Instead, all he did, his goal and aim in the Reformation, was to boldly and humbly proclaim the, the gospel of the free gift of grace for all people. So the Reformation is nothing else than about freedom. It's the freest holiday that we have. Independence Day, 4th of July, they got nothing on the Reformation. Today is about freedom. And without that freedom in Christ, we are nothing, really. Worse than nothing, Christ says that without that freedom, we are slaves to sin. So we celebrate this freedom. We find joy in this freedom. We find our identity in this freedom. As Jesus says, the truth will set you free. We understand that knowing it being the truth of God's word will set us free, but that's a phrase that I imagine lots of people are familiar with, whether inside or outside the church. The truth will set you free. It can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And here in our own country, in America, freedom can mean a lot of different things. American freedom is a great thing. Used well, it can be a gift of God, but American freedom is much different than our Christian freedom. Our understanding of American freedom can give us a skewed view of Christian freedom. When I think of American freedom, I can think back to an elementary classroom. You can paint this picture, picture, view this picture with me. You got little Johnny and little Sally, okay? Excuse the, the made-up names here. But they're going to, into reading time in class. And Johnny always has his favorite beanbag that he sits in every single day. It's been his beanbag chair since the very beginning of the school year. And all of a sudden, when he goes there on this certain day, Sally's sitting there. He goes up and says, that's my beanbag chair. You have to get out of there. And she says, it's a free country, isn't it? I can sit wherever I want. Probably true in uh, Lutheran churches and your pews also. But sometimes that's the attitude that as Americans we have. It's a free country. I can do whatever I want. But as Johnny and Sally grow up, and as we know as adults now, that's not quite what it means to be free. There's plenty of rules, plenty of things to follow, rules in place upon us that we have to fulfill and do. But maybe more and more as we look around in our world and in our culture today, that attitude of freedom is becoming more and more true. It's a free country, isn't it? I can do whatever I want. I can believe whatever I want. I can make truth to be whatever I want it to be. As long as it feels good, then it must be good, and it's all okay. But when we, when we look at worldly freedom through the lens of God's Word, we find that it is much more similar to slavery than it is to true freedom. Slavery in our country is kind of a touchy subject. It's a word we don't like to talk about a lot. But when we look at our world through the lens of the gospel, we see that the reality is that slavery is still a very real thing in our world, in our country, and even in our community. Slavery to our own opinions slavery to our own passions and desires, slavery to our own truth, slavery to our own schedules, slavery to our own possessions, slavery to technology, slavery to sports, slavery to sin. Whatever it may be that 
gets in our way of putting God first and foremost in our life, whatever it is that gets in the way of seeing and following the truth of God's gospel, is that slavery to sin. There are many in our country, many in our own communities, many in our own parts of our world, in our own lives that do not know the truth of the gospel that will set them free. They don't know of the love of a God, the God who loves them so much he sent his one and only son to die for them, who rose from the grave for them so that freedom may be theirs. That is the truth of the freedom of the gospel. There's no, there's no middle ground when it comes to this truth of God's salvation plan. Either we are slaves to sin or we are free in Christ and his beautiful gospel. There's no other truth outside of the truth of God's good news. The truth that in God we find freedom from bondage to sin. And in this freedom we are given a new identity. We become new people, a new creation in Christ. And in this new creation, this new people, this new body, we are given a new purpose. We are brought into something greater than ourselves, brought into God's salvation plan, and given a purpose that this world could never give us, that worldly freedom cannot give. In this new freedom, we live as free servants in God's salvation plan. Martin Luther had this to say about what it means to be a free Christian, the freedom of a Christian. He said this, that a Christian is perfectly free, Lord of all, subject to none. A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to all. That almost can sound like Johnny and Sally in the elementary school classroom thinking that freedom means I can do whatever I want, then you grow up and find all these responsibilities in the real world. As Christians, we know we are free, but that doesn't mean it's just a free ticket to do whatever we want. In this freedom, we're brought into something greater. In this freedom, we are brought into God's salvation plan in which we are called to be servants to all. The freedom is greater than worldly freedom. It is free from bondage to sin, free from the claim of the devil. He has no place in our lives because we are free from his grip. And in that freedom, brought into the salvation plan of God, brought into his purposes and his plan, we are the free servants of God. What does it look like to be a free servant. Well, Jesus says this in our reading today. He says that if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. The free servant is the disciple of Christ. Being brought into and given that gift of freedom, a free gift is being brought into his discipleship. And we practice that discipleship by abiding in his word. A few weeks ago, we talked about the importance of reading our Bibles. Of course, we place great importance on that. That's why we give it to our kids at such a young age, toddlers. And then as they grow up, they get a new Bible to continue to grow. And then in high school, they get another one. And as adults, you get another one. You keep growing up in God's Word to see the identity that it gives us in that freedom. And then the roles that we now live out as role models in the faith, faith for all. That's what it looks like to live out the faith in following the victor Christ Jesus, as Pastor Jonathan reminded us last week. But abiding in God's word, remaining in it, dwelling in it, living in it, goes much deeper, farther, and wider than reading it. Reading it is absolutely part of it. It is very important to be in the word. 
but then we also practice it. Being a free servant is living out what we read and learn in God's Word. It is doing life together here as the church. Abiding in God's Word is abiding in the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ. And as we abide in the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, we abide in His body, which is the church. We are the church of God. We are the body of Christ, and we abide together by doing life together. And here in this church body at Resurrection, we have many opportunities to abide in God's Word together. In the next couple weeks, in the next few hours, we have many opportunities to abide in God's Word together. We have Bible study hour at 9.30. Later this afternoon, we have trunk or treat, and there we will abide together in God's Word, doing life together as His church. Next Sunday, we have the outdoor worship service at Ritter Park. There we will abide together as God's church, abiding in His Word, not just as the people of resurrection, but with the multicultural, multi-ethnic church at large as we worship with our brothers and sisters. And we will get a glimpse of the diversity of God's kingdom in the resurrection. There we will abide in God's word together. And as we abide in God's word together, we are examples to the world at large, examples to those in the community of what it means to live out the freedom of God. So in these great opportunities and these events, bring a neighbor, bring a friend, and they will see what it looks like to live out the freedom of God given to us. But as we abide in God's word, it's, it's not just the big events that give us opportunities to abide in the word. It is here, on a Sunday morning, that we abide in God's word together. We abide in his word as we hear it read to us, hear it proclaimed to us, as we hear God speak to us, you are forgiven. That free gift of his forgiveness. The free gift of his true body and blood given to us to unite us in the faith, strengthen our faith, and again, forgive us. And as we abide in God's word together, as we are the body of Christ united in this freedom, we are free servants together. And we practice being the free servants of God by dwelling together, doing life together, getting to know one another. Look around. These are the people we will spend eternity together. So we might as well start getting to know each other now. Learn one another's names if you don't know it. As soon as the final amen is said, don't rush out the doors. Talk to one another. Do life together. Get to know one another. Abide in God's word together. Abide in God's church together. For we are united in that word. We are given that freedom from God, the free gift of his grace. God's freedom cannot be contained. God's freedom cannot be bound. In that freedom, we are given that new identity as free servants. And with that identity, we're given a purpose. A purpose that worldly freedom could never give. A purpose that worldly freedom greatly falls short of. So on this Reformation Sunday, the gift of freedom is what the Reformation's all about. It's not about the celebration of one man or the celebration of one church body. Rather, it's the celebration of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, and His body, that is the church, made free by His blood. Abide in God's Word. Abide in the church. For you are the free servants of Christ. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as we officially start doing some of the things that Pastor Zach is talking about. We take a few minutes every week to 
focus on the gift of peace that God has given us and our chance to share that with one another. So let's take time to do that right now. The peace of the Lord be with you. Take a minute and share that same peace with somebody that's sitting nearby. Aaron, peace of the Lord. Right, peace of the Lord with you. Sally, God's peace. God's peace. Thank you. Please don't forget to take a moment and sign the fellowship pad, and I invite you to... to are we going to remain standing, Bob? We are not going to stand. We're going to sit down for, for a focus in song on what Pastor Zach was just talking about, Thy Strong Word.
Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, may your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your hands we commend those for whom we pray who are in need of healing at this time. We remember especially Rick Collins, Emma Veldung, Alice, Carl, Richard, Paul, Brian, and Lena, Dennis, Bill, and Brian. We pray for them and remember all who are in need today, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world in its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We also remember the petitions that are before our church today, in addition for those who are in need of healing. We also pray for the family of Donna Noreen, as requested by uh, her son Dave, uh, as she has uh, gone home to heaven to be with you. Father, be with the Noreen family at this time and remind them of your eternal promises, which are ours in Christ Jesus, and the inheritance which awaits us. Give them your peace and comfort today, we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we also pray for our nation as elections will soon be underway. We pray for peaceful and fair elections, and we ask that you continue to guide our hearts as we take part in what is our civic duty as Americans. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we remember those who are persecuted Christians worldwide. Keep them in your care. Remind them that you are close at hand and give them, and that you give them strength. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for the water of holy baptism and for bringing Emma Veldung to you and to your eternal family, that you possess her in Christ Jesus today, and we ask that you would continue to keep her and cause her to grow up in you. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, Father, we, we pray for those who, for whatever reason, are unable to gather in person at this time with us, maybe because of chronic illness, maybe because of anxiety, or maybe for some other reason. We pray that you would meet them in their place of need and give them encouragement. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, according to the tradition of our church, we once again revisit the Lord's Prayer and offer it up again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. given unto death for you. Touch that body of Christ given for you.
We now depart in the freedom of Christ to live and abide in his word and abide in his church as his free servants. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.